Gerhard and me, we had a history in um, building our own tools for music making. And we figured out that there was um, no software, no serious commercial product for people performing music. So at some point it became pretty clear that the thing to do is a software which works different than a audio workstation. In a way, life is just combining two concepts which already were there, time stretching. There was Asset before, which did a great job, but it was only linear editing. And there were drum computers and there were our own um, creations, which did the real-time sequencing. And the combination of those two technologies in this new uh, paradigm of the session view was the birth of life. I like the fact that uh, even after eight plus versions, it still is very straightforward. If you look at it and compare the interface of Live 8 with the interface of Live 1, it's a nice, slowly improved interface, but it's still uh, fast enough and easy enough to be understood. I like the fact that it's fast. The biggest step forward uh, in life for me is the incorporation of Max, because it allows me to do very, very specific, very personal things within an environment which is uh, very standardized. So instead of opening a few Max patches and a live set and having all kinds of uh, workarounds to get those things combined, I press save and my whole work is saved within live. I'm a, a curious person when it comes to synthesis. Uh, I um, really dive deeply into algorithms and that's why I actually don't have a huge collection of synthesizers, both in software and in hardware. I have a few machines which I really admire and I try to dive as deep as possible. And physical modeling is something which just caught my interest because I like the behavior. I like um, sounds which have a natural feel, some kind of liveness to them. And physical modeling is very good for that. The idea of physical modeling is that you use physical knowledge of how musical instruments work um, in order to create the sounds. The, the usual way how it's working is that you listen to a sound, let's say a flute, and you try to understand what is the properties of a flute um, just from the perspective of a listener. You don't need to see a flute, you not, don't need to see someone playing a flute. You just hear the sound and say, aha, a short attack, and it ends pretty much immediately after you stop playing it. It has a specific spectrum, which is like kind of a, a filtered rectangular waveform. And if you want to emulate a flute with an old classic MOOC synthesizer or something like this, you use noise, you use a rectangular waveform, a low pass filter, and um, the result is kind of flute-ish. Physical modeling um, works in a different way. Physical modeling says, okay, what is a flute if I look at it from an engineering perspective? It's a tube, so there's one part of it, there's a hole, there's another part of it, there's an opening at the bottom, and there's an opening at the top where you breathe in. And <coughs> those two tubes can be seen as tu two resonators where the air is resonating, and you can, can, can come up with some formulas which describe this. And the exciting thing is, once you have those formulas, um, you can feed a computer with those, and the computer sounds like a flute. And the more precise you model all the details, um, the more realistic the flute will sound. If you want to play with this flute, if you want to change the sound, um, you do it by changing things which are um, absolutely completely connected to the nature of the flute itself. You're not changing something um, abstract as a cutoff frequency. You change something like the length, the diameter, the air pressure. And try to make the trumpet out of it. Usually when I make my songs and I um, go back to them and I listen to them, um, if I don't like stuff, it's in 90% of the case something where I said this and this and this is too much. It's very helpful to reduce yourself and to only use a very limited set of things and try to make the maximum out of those. So if you make a track 
and you feel that the track doesn't do what you want, um, don't add more stuff. Wait a half a day, come back to it, and bypass all the effects step by step, mute all the tracks step by step, start again listening to the very first track, and try really to think what is the most stripped down version that still makes sense. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. 